So what are those uh, political drivers? These, these are global drivers. It's not just about the UK. Uh, it's, it's about the world. We have a problem that needs to be overcome. We have uh, an increasing population uh, that has to be looked after. We have to provide the services. We have an environment that we want to maintain. Uh, we want to uh, be a good place to live as well as everything else. And we also have financial problems. And we've all seen these over the last years, and increasingly so as we move forward. So not just for this country, but also for the world. So what are the effects to meet the global population? That's going to be need more roads, more infrastructure, more hospitals, more school. It's going to take a greater toll on the environment. We're going to need more land, water, etc. And we need to minimise the impact on the environment. And throughout all of this, as we've seen, the economically, uh, we need an economic viability uh, and sustainability as we move forward. We, we cannot, uh, and we have to try to manage all three of these uh, as one set of uh, requirements. We also have other things to look at uh, within the industry itself. Safety, um, how many people do we uh, kill on our sites, or how many people die on our sites uh, due to uh, some of the problems we have. We're also looking at carbon. Um, we're looking at the carbon footprint, this is also part of the mandate and the global requirement. Uh, and we, we obviously, as we've, we've looked at, is the timely delivery uh, of all of these things. Um, not just in the delivery of the project itself, but in projects so that they are, they are there at the right time for the increasing problems that we have. And a continued uh, uh, control of our costs. As we know, we, we have reduced uh, budgets uh, in the UK at the moment. And so we need to get the best that we can out of the monies that we have. So more schools, more hospitals, etc. at a lower cost, reduce that cost, be more efficient and more effective. How are we doing on safety in the UK? How are we doing on carbon at the moment? Or time, or indeed maintaining value? Well, we could do, we could do a lot better than we are. Certainly some of the effects we see uh, on the construction sites is, is trying to reduce, and there, are, there is evidence that we are reducing uh, the, the safety uh, issues, we, we're increasing the safety issues, I should say, uh, and reducing those problems. However, we have to now try to get this over to uh, quite a large community. So moving this forward, we have to try to educate and, and upskill and uh, bring about more effective use of 2. million possible people within our industry. How do we address that? We, we have the, uh, the expenditure of £90 billion in the UK uh, on construction, 6.7% uh, of the total D GDP. And of course, uh, in the future, it looks as if we're going to have to access a marketplace where there's possibly $12 trillion uh, by 2025 of, of other projects globally. And we want to be prepared and be more effective, more efficient uh, to enable us to go out and to win those contracts, to bring more money into the country. It's all about labour, employment, uh, better economies, etc. for ourselves. When we started this uh, a number of years ago, um, one of the main uh, people that supported us through the UK, through the UK government was Paul Morrell. And once we got this underway, uh, this is one of the statements that he made uh, when he could see how we were going to tackle the problem. And as you can see, we are only just beginning to understand the scale of what can be achieved and the amount of waste that can be eliminated from the system if we apply these processes effectively. So although there has been a lot of reports over the years, Latham Report we mentioned earlier, the Egan Report, Accelerating Change in 2002, Never Waste a Good Crisis from Andrew Wooston Home, uh, we're in a crisis at the moment and we should make good, uh, good use of it but also looking towards the infrastructure requirements uh, moving forward. So this, this program was laid out in, in 2010, uh, but we still have to deliver it over the next 10 to 15 years. Can we do it more effectively and at lower costs? In 2011, uh, coming out of the uh, BS 1192-207 and the Avanti work, um, it was obvious we could move these things forward. So the BIM strategy uh, the UK Government BIM Strategy 2011 was produced. The Construction Strategy produced a little bit later in, in, in that year, which has led us to an industrial strategy. So BIM is not just seen as something to produce drawings. We're now getting into a much more um, 
interesting and effective uh, period of work. And that looks towards growth, growth in our industry, which was produced in 2013. So going back to that, becoming more effective and efficient uh, to win more work. This is about getting more money coming in. And uh, that has led us to the, uh, um, the construction strategy 2025, also produced in 2013. Although we were looking at uh, the, uh, overcoming the problems and eradicating the waste in our industry, for around about uh, 20 to 25 percent, new targets have been set in the 2025. They are lower cost by 33 percent, faster delivery by 50 percent, lower emissions, uh, coming back to carbon and any other form of emission, and improving uh, our exports. Um, and certainly, uh, the situation we're in at the moment, this is a very important uh, position. Uh, that we have to look at. So what is the HMG construction strategy? Deadline we have and what, is the, what are we actually trying to procure? The uh, HMG uh, construction strategy has set a deadline uh, for the industry to prepare for and, and indeed the, the government itself has to prepare for the deadline of a mandate uh, to deliver BIM Level 2 in April uh, 2016. Uh, this date obviously has already come uh, and uh, we're moving forward looking at the procurement out of government to procure not just cost uh, reduction and time reduction but also the procurement of digital information uh, to deliver into the life cycle uh, for, use, uh, for the in-use activity. Uh, that is the maintenance of, of these programs at the end of the day. But it's also making sure we, can, uh, we have the monies uh, to achieve our requirements for the schools, hospitals, uh, etc., uh, the infrastructure programme that we have set, uh, set out for ourselves. Sir Francis Maud uh, has uh, uh, supported everything that we've been doing up to now and uh, is helping us move towards the, the delivery of uh, uh, those goals and benefits that we were looking for. Uh, you can find these on, for the moment, on the BIM taskgroup.org uh, website. But there is now a new website uh, for, if you just Google BIM uh, Level 2, uh, then you will find the new website uh, at the BSI, which lists and, and makes available to you all of the documentation that you're going to need uh, to embed BIM Level 2. The members of the team uh, that have been uh, the, the uh, leading team here through Mark Bew and uh, uh, David Phelps, who are chairing and managing this whole project forward. We, we have a number of other players in Rob Manning, uh, Barry Blackwell, uh, Jamie Johnson, Ray, uh, Roy Evans, Simon Rawlinson Legal and Adam uh, Matthews is also looking at the education and, and uh, delivery of this. So this is the task group that is helping to pre prepare uh, the industry for the BIM Level 2 requirement. What they've also put into place are a series of other uh, groups um, around the country. Uh, and also within particular activities. There are the BIM4 groups, so you will see BIM for SMEs, the small and medium enterprises, uh, BIM for regulation, looking at uh, building regulation rules, etc. Uh, and these are expanding. Uh, they're under the guidance of David Felp uh, for the moment, uh, and they have the ability to look at the requirements of BIM Level 2 and to have uh, a look to see how they feed back to government to tell us uh, what else may be needed for them to move forward. In addition to this, for the community at large, we have the BIM regions. Uh, these are clubs, if you like, that are set up in every region in the UK. Uh, certainly the southeast area has five, not just one. And these are for people, groups, uh, for people to get together to talk about BIM Level 2, to get understanding of what this is all about. Uh, and to try to move the whole community forward as quickly as we can, uh, not forgetting that we have uh, 2.9 million people to get to in a very short period of time. This year, or certainly in February 2015, uh, the uh, Vince Cable launched the Digital Built Britain. So this is a new uh, activity looking towards Level 3 um, and smart cities. And this is, uh, we cannot move forward on this until we've actually embedded BIM Level 2, uh, so this is why it becomes more and more important. One of the things that he also stated, which is more important to us at the moment, is although we carried out the case studies uh, and we showed what savings could be made, in the early adopter projects, which have already gone out and been procured, uh, we can see savings of £814 million already 
on centrally funded uh, projects uh, during the 2013-2014 period. And I'm sure we will get more updates out of 2015 uh, as we move forward.